excited to be here and see all these beautiful faces. All these beautiful faces. Um, so wonderful. Well, first, we want to congratulate you oh. on your new role oh, with thank Ben you. Deere. Thank you. Um, Kimberly is the president and chief commercial officer for Ben Deere. So we want to <laughs> give you, thank you, you know, with so few um, black women in C-suite positions, uh, you know, we do want to take that moment and, and give you that respect. I appreciate um, and you. Congratulate you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I, you know, um, it's been an interesting journey. We talk about our journeys, and I won't take up time. No, this is journey. your time. You got to. Uh, okay. It. So, um, <laughs> you know, I've held corporate roles, run four billion dollar businesses. You know, get, made a lot of money for a lot of companies, and because I was the only or the first, you know, every day I had to prove myself. And so that journey seemed very long and arduous. And I just, I felt like, is this gonna happen? Because I would see other people and they maybe did something 10 years ago and they're still getting like all these accolades. And they're like, what have you done for me? You know, you did something 10 minutes ago, what have you done for me lately? And so I uh, left corporate America, started my own business and it was about interim CC leadership because I knew what I knew. I just needed to, to apply that in spaces that people appreciate it. And so um, Bandier was one of my first clients. And interestingly enough, uh, VS and Co and some of the other companies that I worked for became clients. But Bandier, um, the relationship that I developed with the founders and then the questions they would ask and um, bringing me to the board and saying, you know, that thing that happened that you were really excited about, she did it. Mm -hmm. I had never been in a situation where I actually got acknowledged <laughs> right, you know, right. for those things other than a promotion, but it was a different type of promotion, right? Mm -hmm. And so long story longer, a lot of things happened that, had re that really helped this incredible brand, Bandier. Many of you know, there's a young lady here who I met when we came, you, you asked us to meet people we didn't know. I met her when I first came in and she overheard that I was with Bandier and she stopped. She's like, I love Bandier. And uh, <laughs> Bandier is just an incredible brand. The business needed to meet the brand. And so um, the board said, we, 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 we see your vision, we agree with it, but we can't support it if you don't commit to it. And I said, well, what does that mean? I'm committed. <laughs> I'm sitting in front of you. And they said, no, we'd like you to be the president because your vision needs to be realized through your eyes. And um, I don't know, that was quite a day. Um, and I have enjoyed every stressful moment of it <laughs> since then. Because <laughs> there's a lot of work to do. There are a lot of changes that we're going to make, but it's so exciting. And I was just saying at lunch, I've, I've found what I want to do. And, you know, we take this business to the next, and then I want to find the next business because founders are creative and they're, they come up with amazing ideas, but they don't often have the partner to help them commercialize that idea. And, and that's what I, I love being in that space. So um, I'm excited. I'm really excited. And... Uh, Anything's possible. Anything is possible. <laughs> now, we're excited for you, and you know, you shed light a bit on the vision. Can you tell us about your role? Sure. So, um, it, as the president and chief commercial officer, I'm responsible for everything except finance and ops. And so, um, I don't. I mean, I, know, I run the business, so I, I get to look at the P&L, but I'm not responsible for making those reports. Um, and when it comes to operations and logistics and um, making sure that the lights work in the stores or you know, our, our 3PL is, is up and running, that's not my direct responsibility. Um, in commercial, in being the chief commercial officer, 
And that's why they, they were very specific in the title of president slash chief commercial officer because there's a COO and CFO. And they don't report to me. Um, but I'm responsible for the storytelling, the branding, the marketing, the product, the product development. You know, it's a multi-brand retailer, so that means that we have to have a vertical operation as well as you have to buy from the market. How are we negotiating with those um, vendors? What does a co-op marketing agreement look like? We do a lot of collaborations. Who are we collaborating with and what do those deals look like? Um, that is my responsibility. And it really all goes, if you, you know, if you take all of that, it's the story that you relate to emotionally that makes you, as the consumer, you know when you want to buy something, but I make sure that you want to buy it from Van Deer. So that is my job. So I'm the what, and you're the when. That's a big job. <laughs> it's a pretty big job. Yeah, and um, I do it uh, while I commute every week. I know, and also. you still text me, which is really impressive. <laughs> I'll, I will stop texting you so much. No, you can text um, me. <laughs> so so you, have, you have 25 years of experience in retail and fashion. Um, super impressive. We're here to talk about sustainability mm. and design. Um, what have you seen in your experience in these areas evolve? Well, first of all, um, just the use of the word, mm. right? The, the idea of sustainability. It, you, it used to be like kind of an abstract idea, and um, now I hear it all day. People are talking about sustainability. And what I find interesting about the word is that it means so many different things, right? And so when you think about a brand, I mean, we're talking about changing the, the, you know, the world and, and saving the earth. But if you think about what sustainability really means, you can apply it to everything. And, and, and I think about it like that. So I, if I'm thinking about a brand, then I'm thinking about how are we creating a sustainable brand that will be forever relevant to generations to come. If I'm thinking about, you know, how are we doing um, our process different, then how do I make that sustainable so that it's relevant and no matter who's doing it, it works to make sure that the business is successful. If I'm looking at how do we change the climate and save the earth from a sustainability pers um, perspective, then you know, you think about resale, right? How big resale has gotten. Um, you know, I have two teenagers, and so the whole idea of re resale and vintage mm -hmm. shopping and thrift shopping, you know, you think about that, there's a lot more, that, none of that's new, but it's considered a new idea because we're talking about it in the context of sustainability. Um, the flip side of that is what aren't we doing so that we are not making those differences, right? We, we went after fast fashion, right? We, how many of us still shop at Zara? Right, like, <laughs> of course we do. <laughs> but I, <laughs> right, they're afraid to say like it, raise your hand, right? And so we talk about it, but, but it's one of those things that we talk out both sides of our, That's right. of our face, right? Like we wanna talk about save the earth, but when you think about what fast fashion and even some slow fashion has done to the um, just you know to carbon, it's ten percent of our carbon footprint, right? And then water is even more, like how we use water and how we're dying and 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 uh, dying fabrics. And so when I think about it, it is right here all of the time, mm -hmm. all the time. Before I came here. We did a. We were doing a color sketch and fabric review, and I think I asked twelve times, <laughs> you know, what color lab are we using? What do? How did? How is it different than where we've been? Because you're talking about sustainability. What's the difference? What's the real difference? You know, what's? I know there's a customer facing difference, but what's the real difference? And when we talk about organic 
you know, oh, so we do sweats, right? So organic cotton. Real, well, okay, so what makes the organic better, right? And, and, why, and there's a difference in the price. And then that's a whole nother conversation, right? Because even if you want to be sustainable and you want to make a difference, it costs money. So what are consumers open to spend to support the changes that you have to make to your supply chain, to your product suppliers, to your process? It's not free. Right, and so again, we're 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 balancing the scale of we want trend, we want it at a price point, and we want to save the earth. But that doesn't go together. That's not A plus B equals C. Like that's like kumquats and apples and some tomatoes, right? Like you <laughs> have to. We have to have that conversation. Yeah, you know, I was going to ask you how is Bandier prioritizing um, sustainability, like in the strategy, and you just touched on it, right? Like you're asking, well, wait a minute, what are we doing differently in, you know, in the process? What are some other practices um, that you're including? Well, we are, we, we are working with mills who, um, their natural fibers are not treated. Like, so there's a way to treat fibers so that it can go through machines faster as it's weaving or being knit. And so we've started working with um, mills that don't treat their fibers. So it t it's a longer lead time. We work on mm -hmm. a longer lead time, but we've accepted that longer lead time because that's important. Um, today we were talking about the, the cost associated with um, the garment dyeing and some of the things that we are trying to do with our we want to garment dye as opposed to dye the yarns because then there's less waste, right? And so, okay, we're going to do that. We're going to do it in LA because then we can really manage it, but it's going to cost more. Mm -hmm. And so that's where the big conversation came up. Like, how much would you be willing to pay for a sweatshirt, right? If, we, if, if our sweatshirts are usually about 198 right? And that's still that's using sustained, you know, organic cotton, but in an older way. If we really want to push this envelope, that 198 sweatshirt is now going to be 268. Are you willing to pay 268 and say you were part of saving the earth a little bit? So those are the conversations. Those are the things that we're doing. We have a brand, Wesley. It's 100% sustainable. We only use organic cotton and all of the, you know all the yarns, we, we do that. Said, should we be extending that to other brands? And the brands that we're buying from, have we, have we really taken that step to ask them what they're doing? Mm -hmm. We haven't, but that's part of the strategy go forward. How, how are our third party vendors partnering with us to make sure that if we say that's what we stand for, then we really stand for it. You know, right, and right. it's a challenge with footwear. That's a whole nother, like that's a whole nother day, <laughs> right? Because right. with footwear, you know, there are not very many companies that are making shoes from pineapples. You know? Correct, correct. <laughs> so, um, and why do you think it's important that brands, retailers, uh, brands and retailers prioritize sustainability? I mean, you've sort of, you know, alluded to the challenges that it, it, it's creating for consumers? Well, I think it's, it's bigger than that, right? It's the whole idea of the sustainability. So I have teenagers. We have a teenager. Mm -hmm. I hope our teenagers one day maybe have children. And what world are they going to grow up mm -hmm. in? Mm -hmm. You know, there was a, um, I can't remember which, uh, it was, I think, a Sunday morning. Sometimes I... I'm older than I look because I like watching Sunday no, morning on CBS. <laughs> but um, they were talk. They had taken over a, a, a forest, mm -hmm. and they had done different pods to show you what would happen to the Earth based on if we do something 
if we don't do something, and, and at what pace, right? So if, it, if, if the um, Earth's temperature went up by two, two um, degrees or nine, which they said was the ultimate nine, or if it stayed where it is, and you went, and they went into these pods, and I'm a nerd, yep, I was like, oh, what happens? And so if it stays where it is now, and if we can keep it where it is now, we'll, we'll be fine. If it goes up to two degrees, we might not be so fine, but we'll survive. We'll just, our lifestyles will have to change. You know, we might have to wear masks, God forbid, we might have to wear masks all the time. There, there'll be changes that we'll have to make. Our food systems will, will have to be more, um, less organic. If, it, if we continue on the path though, and we get to nine degrees more, just, just, just nine, then it's gonna be like, you know, um, what was the, like Mad Max? Because everything's gonna die right, including us. So I don't see what, that there's an option and we should all try to do our part. The, 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 the thing that's really, I don't wanna say frustrating, but I guess that probably is the best word for it, frustrating, is that the little, the things that were, companies that are saying they're doing something, what the words aren't, really matching the impact, right? And so like when you recycle, you, you know, you go to H&M or Zara and they have those bins, that looks great. But those, most of those products go into landfills. So that's not helping. It's not like they're taking those products apart and redoing them and putting them back on the shelf. They go into landfills. So, when you see people say that they're doing something, ask them to tell you the journey of what that is and, and, then, and then challenge them. Um, because that, that, makes, that makes a little bit of a difference because it's cleaning out somebody's closet, but it, then what's it doing beyond that? Um, and when you think of brands like Rothby's or, you know, they're doing something, but that's changing maybe half of 1% of the change that needs to happen. So we have to be really diligent and we need to ask questions and be curious and, and ask what, are, what's, what else is happening? What are you doing beyond what your customer facing um, representation of sustainability is? Ask those questions. A and then read and be a science nerd and look for opportunities to offer you know, the brands that you love. People, if someone texts me or reached out to me on LinkedIn and said, hey, I, had an, I have an idea, I'd be so excited. Like nobody who's sitting in those jobs has all the answers, mm -hmm. right? We have to be a part of it. So that, that would be my recommendation. Two prong questions. What changes do you want to see from retailers and who's doing it well? No. Come on, uh, come on, somebody's doing it well. Um, what do I wanna see from retailers? I, I, I guess I, I, uh, I want more transparency. Mm. I, I want, I don't mind paying a little more yeah. and having less, mm -hmm. right? Like I don't need to have new something to wear every week, right? I'm fine with that. So I'd rather them take the time, tell me, what are you doing? Put a hang tag, like not even a hang tag, really. I'd rather just go on, you know, go on their website and know exactly what are you doing? Um, and, and then give me that choice. The other thing I think needs to happen is that there needs to be more regu regulation mm -hmm. around it because without measurable KPIs that people are held accountable to, we're not going to move the needle far enough. Yeah. So um, I know in New York, they're, they're, 
there are some things that they're working on, um, but it needs to be global. Like there needs, there, it, there, it, it's just, it's the same thing with race. Like if there are not measurable things that you're being held accountable to, you can say anything, you can do anything. So um, those are two things that I'd like to see. Love and who is doing it well? Um, I have to wrap. No, you don't. <laughs> no, you don't. Bandier is doing it well. No, actually, I will say, you know, not to do a selfish plug, but I do think that Bandier is doing it well. I love that plug. I do. I do. I, they, they, they genuinely care. They do, and, and I see it every day. You are such a boss. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you for joining the Sustainability Forum, uh, Kimberly. It's great to see you. Thank you. Um, and congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.